Hey, welcome back to the Dumpling Show. You know, in the past, I talked to many projects building on Cardano, from DeFi to CNFT to RealFi. But with so many projects building on Cardano, do you ever feel like you're overwhelmed by the amount of research you need to do in order to understand the projects? I know I feel that sometimes. And that's, that is why today we have two very special guests coming here helping us do our own research, understand projects better. So with that said, let's welcome our guests today. We have Eric from Smart SketDAO and RJM from CRCI. Welcome, guys. Yeah, Hi, thank you. Me. Welcome, happy to have you here. So why don't we start with a brief introduction of yourselves and your projects? Then let's start with Eric. Sure, yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Dumpling. Uh, so I'm Eric. I'm the founder of the Smart Contract Audit Token. We were funded in uh, uh, Fund 5 from Project Catalyst to bring uh, decentralized smart contract audit services to Cardano. Um, so while doing that, we kind of had it uh, where we were developing the program to do the smart contract portion. And then we we're also going to have a portion where it was uh, not smart contracts. So, uh, you know, we would analyze the team, the tokenomics, things that like the average investor would be able to understand. You know, when they're reading a, uh, uh, an, an audit report, there's a lot of information on there that can kind of be difficult for the average person to understand. So we wanted to have this kind of information that anybody could look through and uh, get a better understanding of the project. So while we were going through and developing that, we kind of came to the realization that this is something that it doesn't really take a specialized auditor to do. This is something that anybody could do if they want to learn about a project to get a better understanding of it and really do, uh, do their research on it. So we decided to kind of spin it off and create this tool that, uh, you know, it, it gives anybody the, the knowledge and the resources to kind of go through, learn how to research a project. And then it helps you document it so that uh, you can create your own report and share it with others so that they can benefit from the research that you did. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you're filling the gap between people spending too much time on research. You're giving them an easy to use tool. Yeah, so I, I think part of the problem is there's not a whole lot of research being done in the first place. Um, you know, it's a common thing that people say, uh, do your own research or DYOR. It's, probably the most common phrase that I hear, uh, you know, in, in this space, but people say that all the time and it's really good advice, but it's pretty rare that someone actually tells you how to do your own research. You know, pe people throw that word around a lot, but no one says, okay, these are the steps that you should go to in order to get an understanding of what's important. And so uh, uh, we, we do believe that it's an important thing to do, but we wanted to give people a, a way to do it, the, the knowledge and the tools that uh, it could be easy and accessible for anybody. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Thank you, Eric. Why don't we hear from RJM about his project then? Yes, thank you, Dumpling. Thank you for having me on the on the cast today. Um, so yeah, the Cardano RealFi Confidence Index, that's what CRCI stands for. And this is exactly kind of out of the same energy that Eric was sharing, um, how to explore investigating and, and discerning the DeFi landscape on Cardano. And, and this was just an extension of, you know, everyone has their own ways and methods. And, you know, there's a lot of spreadsheets out there that people like have to keep track of what they want to look at. Um, but in, in, in my particular adventure into this, into this, uh, this scope of, of learning about DeFi and Cardano, I just found that like gathering all this information, there's just, there seemed to be a, a, a roadmap in front, in front of me about how to actually somewhat quantify what I was looking at keep track of it, compare it, and, and eventually it came up to a score system. And it's a very uh, uh, specific and regimented approach to exactly this, trying to examine the DeFi landscape. And it's, and it's related to confidence because it's not, a, it's not a metric on a specific performance or yield returns or mm -hmm. other you know, components that are, it's maybe a moving target, total value locked. I mean, there's gonna be screeners for such things, but it's more about, the the assessment of the project themselves what's the ruggability factor <laughs> it's kind of a term that i've maybe invented there but it's just kind of the, the concept of what's the exposure that we have as investors in the platform and their promises and their implementations mm -hmm. so can i ask two uh, questions to clarify number one is that this tool is specializing in DeFi. is that correct that's right the crci is is 
uh, Cardano Real Fi Confidence Index. So Real Fi, I mean, that's a term that Charles threw out there, and I think the context of that was just that DeFi to the next level when there's you know identity and, and other components that are hitting the real world. Uh, but it's you know the DeFi projects on Cardano. There is some discussion about like you know certain uh, uh, metaverse projects might have you know a tokenomic model and all these other components that are air quotes you know DeFi. Uh, but that's maybe you know, down the road. But right now, just focusing on the this kind of the monetary components of of the majority of our DeFi landscape at this at this time, at least. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the second question is, when people use your tool or people you use your system, they will see a quantifiable number as a score. Is that correct? Yeah. So for the CRCI, um, again, this this is a a, a dwelled over approach. Um, uh, that tracks eight different domains and in two different categories. So first, for instance, the first is the assessment of the proposals, what they say, essentially, their social engagement, the white paper, the tokenomics, uh, their team, their developers, things like that. And then there's the assessment of the implementations. So the audit, uh, any track record they have with performance, user protections, in this case, like how, how are they building their platform that protects the user? Uh, like, is there is there a way that a user can screw up, like a button to send all tokens and assets, as an example? Uh, industry accolades, things that they're they're recognized externally by or internally by you know credible sources, uh, things like that, and then kind of the catch-all of cu cumulative demerits is what I call it, and that's any activity, behavior, misrepresentation, lack of transparency or clarity that might otherwise intentionally or incidentally misdirect. Uh, the platform participants, the Cardano network, or the Cardano community. So, it's mm -hmm. just it's, it's a it's a very specific set of parameters that, uh, I mean, it's a subjective opinion. That's 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 the other uh, comment that has to be clear. This is just one idea, one approach, and the context is that there's consistency in this approach. So when when it's used, use it. If if you disagree with how certain things are assessed. Well, just know that they're all assessed in the same way so you can you can couch that for your own purposes as as far as that context there so yeah yeah sounds great and thank you for sharing i think we can all agree that there's a room for synergy maybe even further collaboration between you guys and in order to better help people i look forward to discussing that further later in the interview but for now why don't we start by presenting both of your tools visually so people can have a better understanding. Eric, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. Let me go ahead and share my screen. All right. Can you see it? Yep. So it takes you to the home page. It's dyortool.io. Uh, you would go right here and you'd click new research. Um, so I'm just going to do this quickly so that we aren't wasting everybody's time. Um, but essentially everything that you're going to fill in, it's kind of up to you. So you can go through and just play with it and read the information if you want. But, uh, if you want to create a report, it's kind of, you're going to get out of it, what you put in. So the more effort that you put into, you know, writing descriptions and things like that, the better report you're going to have. So I go through and... All right, so it goes through and it starts to report. Again, you could put in any information that you want. So you could essentially do you know, any kind of project that you want to research. And you can see it has development team, tokenomics, community, and the ICO slash trading metrics. So you can go through those in any order that you want. Uh, you look on each one, you click on a research point. This one's has the project successfully completed an audit by a reputable service pro provider. So that's something that, you know, as you're going through and you're researching, that's a relevant point that uh, you'd want to consider. And so first I would click on here. It gives you a little description of why this matters. So it's background on why are we looking at this research point? You know, it's, uh, if you're going through and you're researching something, if you don't understand what it is and why you're doing it, it's not going to be very uh, worthwhile. You know, we could go through and say, do this step, do this step. Sorry, what was that? Oh, sorry. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, you, you could have steps to follow, but if you don't understand why you're doing it, it's not as beneficial to you. So we went through and we put a why this matters section, which is a description of, you know, why you're doing this research point, why you should care about it, you know, why it matters at the end of the day. 
Then we have detailed work steps that you could read through and it tells you exactly how you would go about figuring out if they've had an audit by a reputable service provider. So you go through, you follow the steps and you would go and you would document in here. And again, it's kind of whatever you want. You don't have to write anything in this box. You could write a ton of descriptive information. You know, if you want to uh, make these reports and share them with uh, the community, put as much effort into, uh, into it as you want. And then afterwards you go and you click this to evaluate each question. So uh, if I went through, followed the work steps and I determined that yes, they have been audited, I would go ahead and click next. I can go through and I could scroll, you know, back and forth or whatever order that I want. Once I've gone through and I've answered all the questions, I'm not gonna do it on here because it's gonna take a while. You get to the screen where it says all questions are completed. So now mm -hmm. I, I can go to the report that I generated and it gives mm -hmm. a total score. So you could see the development team, uh, eight out of 10, tokenomics, nine out of 10. This would all be based on the information that I've provided in there. And it would give a total percentage as well. Um, and the thought is that it would create this thing that's comparable across different projects. So you could say, okay, well, Sunday Swap got this score and uh, Liquid got this score. And you can kind of compare and contrast, uh, you know, what everybody's kind of getting there. Then if you wanted to go and share it, you could either click on this button right here, which would create a link that you could, uh, it'll create a post automatically on Twitter or Facebook or Reddit. You could click show, which will just show the report automatically, or you could download it. Um, and the other option too, is you can do a screen capture of this right here and share that on uh, social media. And uh, it kind of gives a summary of everything. So let's just click download. And it creates a PDF for me. So for all the information that you input in there, it creates a nice report that, you know, it breaks down some metrics based on the information that you have in there. Uh, most of it is blank. I didn't really spend the time to go through there, but uh, it gives you kind of an idea of, uh, of how that would work. And just one more thing that I'll show. So if you go to the tool and that screen capture that I said that you could show, you could also go right here to scan QR. And if you, uh, if you shared that screen capture on social media that just gave the summary of everything, it has that QR code on there. So if you take that QR code and you upload it, it'll take you to this screen so that, you know, that's the only information that you need to share. You don't have to show the PDF mm -hmm. or, you know, host that anywhere. You could just show that. It'll bring you right there. And then you could see anybody's report that they went through and made. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the basic functionality. Sounds great. Can I ask you a follow-up question, Eric? Of course. So it looks like it does give you a quantitative number, uh, a score, right? But it seems like many of the metrics here are qualitative, like descriptive. How do you guys convert that into a number then? Uh, sure. So we went through and we did a scoring for all the different things based on uh, how important we thought that each category was, you know, so like some of them spelling errors, you know, that's something that I would look at or take into consideration when I'm doing research. If you're looking over a white paper and it's full of spelling errors, that's not a great sign necessarily. Does it mean that it's gonna be a terrible project? No, it's just something to take into consideration. So it's going through and trying to assign a point value saying, okay, if they have some spelling errors, I would say that's a lower uh, number of points versus if they have plagiarism in their white paper, which is another point that you can see here. So it's kind of art and science where you're going through and you're ranking things based on how serious you think they are. And that's based on our uh, opinion. However, this tool is meant to represent everybody's, uh, you know, the, the general consensus of everybody. So while this is a kind of a base plate of what I think is important, it's designed to kind of change and adapt. So we want the community yeah. to give feedback and say, hey, either here's some points that you have in there. I don't think those are important. Or here's some points that you forgot to include that I think you should have in there. And then also, here's the points that you assigned for these things. I think you're giving way too much weighting here and not enough here. And the hope is that everybody's going to provide feedback. And over time, it's going to reflect the general consensus of what everyone thinks is important. So um, so this is kind of a base that we're starting with, but my hope is that everybody's going to be providing feedback and eventually it's going to represent what we all feel is important, not just what our team feels is important. Makes sense. I look forward to playing with this tool. I think it looks great. A lot of useful metrics here. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Let me Thank uh, you. stop sharing. RJM, would you like to present CRCI? Sure, you bet. 
um, just want to say, Eric, that that's a fantastic tool. It looks amazing. And there's a lot of similar ideas that we came up uh, independently. So this is actually a really good sign, I think. <laughs> uh, very good analysis, very good breakdown, a lot of points that you touch on. And I think you said there's about 27 different categories there, which is which is very extensive and it looks really good. So awesome. awesome. Re really appreciate that feedback. And yeah, I would imagine there's probably a good amount of overlap. I'm sure uh, what I thought was an important research point, you probably thought a lot of the same. So that's cool that uh, we kind of overlapped a bit. Right I feel on. like okay. I'm putting you guys on a Tinder date, and I'm feeling really great about it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually okay. had a really good conversation uh, about a month ago or so, something like that, where we talked about it. But uh, yeah, always good to discuss this kind of stuff. So I'll share I'll share the the screen view of of, of the CRCI for a moment here, and I'll just kind of walk through it real quick. Um, I'll go back, actually back to to the the visual card. I don't know if this shows up on your end, but. Um, this is kind of the summary of the project, and, and like I was saying earlier, I mean, the short version of the mission statement is the Cardano Real Fi Confidence Index assesses each project's capacity to execute, communicate, and provide their solutions with transparency, while keeping user protection and Cardano ecosystem health as priorities. So again, same energy as, as the SCAT DAO uh, DAYOR tool. Um, so I wanted to cover this off to start. So it's, it's kind of... Um, important to understand what the CRCI is and what it's specifically not. So as my introduction, I can just read it out loud. With decentralized finance comes individual responsibility. As new decentralized initiatives come online and regulation is ill-equipped to guide the average consumer, there's simply many vectors of failure and attack. Uh, Well-meaning initiatives can face many paths of leaving users in harm's way with no accountability. Uh, some initiatives may intentionally explore ways to exploit weaknesses in decentralized designs, the most susceptible of which being the platform, platform participants. The CRCI score and assessment is a subjective opinion. And I think that's, that's very important as, as a differentiator between what SCATDAO is pro probably doing is it's a community effort uh, of individuals uh, combined subjective opinions, I guess, in this case, but this is just one vector. This is one approach in this particular case. Uh, the Cardano Real Fi Confidence Index is intended to be just one consideration of one's own path of research in decentralized finance opportunities. So again, it's, it's a tool that you can use to augment your own research. No financial advice is implied. Uh, don't take the top three in the score and throw your net worth at it. That's not the, that's not the idea. <laughs> it's just, it's kind of a beacon. It's a metric. It's an idea uh, to, to, to uh, focus maybe some energy on or just maybe look closer at the top and the bottom and to see like how could this be possible that such things that I had an impression of had a score that reflected in a certain way. So that's that's just one point of uh, comment there. Um, it The CRCIS score as assessment is a subjective opinion built on specific and narrow set of parameters and not intended to be a complete resource from which anyone should make a conclusive decision. So that's again, just I wanted to couch everything I say in that frame that this is one approach. So again, uh, in a similar way that this is, uh, these are the, the categories that are looked at and they're weighted very differently as, as, as Eric was suggesting, it's, it's trying to find the magic mix of like what's more important as a component that goes towards how do we look at uh, the, the quality or the caliber of a project on, of DeFi on Cardano. So again, for example, like does their social engagement, like their, their Twitter account would that weigh heavier than the audit and the track record of the project as far as a weighting system for points? Well, it, it seems fairly obvious that no, the audit should override whatever score or assessment we would put on like their Twitter profile. But a Twitter profile that has signs like it was created in February, 2022 and has 50,000 followers, it, it's, it's not a confidence inspiring sign that that's a mm -hmm. legitimate organic growth in that, in that case. So it's important factors to consider because what we're trying to do is weed out the projects that are uh, either intentionally or incidentally, uh, you know, putting us in harm's way. Um, so that's just trying a nice way to say weeding out the scams. So, um, but these are, these are the categories, you know, white paper tokenomics, like, it's very, very similar um, ideas to what uh, Scott Dow is, is doing. So in conjunction with that, this is the spreadsheet. This is actually the data. This is the hand curated content of all the DeFi projects on Cardano as we go. Uh, there's more to come and there's more, more to fill in the blanks. Uh, there's a lot more projects that, you know, have to be uh, vetted and, and, and explored. 
but for the projects that are scored at the, at the at this at this moment they're at the top and they're in order of, of numerical ranking as far as the score so very similar to again the stat approach in this case but active links to their websites to their twitter to their discord anything in their communities uh their blog the jurisdiction of where they're registered the, the project lead um and then a a landmine of check marks to show what what they're offering as services they, are they identity tokens, are they Oracle solution, what are the projects and features that they offer. And then down to the tokenomic models, here is a easy a, a roadmap of uh, their token supply with an active link to the to their white paper or to whatever source that they have for their tokenomic model, uh, how they distribute their tokens, and then what percentages that they actually break down their tokens, as far as what's on their side of the of the line and what's on the public side of the line. So it looks closely at like what's what the what the team allocations are, and and what the uh, insiders or or the seed, the 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 uh, the buddy buddies, <laughs> the rich people, so to speak, no slander there intended. It's just like what's on the on that side of the fence, and then what's on the public side of the fence. So the between airdrops, public sales, and then the token re rewards for the platform going forward. Um, so again, and and the vesting schedules are all broken down. Uh, a short summary of the project, a link to the white paper. So this is absolutely like, if you wanna start launching research on any project on Cardano, I mean, it's it's kind of on a, on a platter in this project for you with an associated score that again, based on all those criteria comes to a certain conclusion. There is an asterisk on this because there are dates going with these, these scores. And for instance, Muesli Swap has become, they were very anonymous at the start. This was done on January 1st, 2022. We, there was not a lot of history involved, but I think we have a, a, a community consensus that it's a, it's a really nice project and it's been working just fine and no signs of you know, rug pulls or any other, uh, other context of, of bad activity. So that score is no likely gonna change. And all these scores are gonna change as, as projects turn on and start launching because a lot of the context of these scores is, a, is the context of, using an app and we only have really two apps to kind of play with other than test nets for like MinSwap and some other things but just, it's just there's a lot going on here and this is going to be a bit dynamic but the value here is the consistency mm -hmm. so for instance the, the challenge with with user generated um, um, assessments and a collection of it is you know I, I could have a, a, a bag of, of Paribus and it's well it's a 10 out of 10 everything's 10 out of 10 right? Or something that I don't particularly like about one thing. And I don't like, you know, somebody, some other project gets the zeros out of zero, and then I, like nothing, nothing counts. And, and it's going to be a, kind of a wild west potentially of opinions. Um, so there's value there to see like what people think like as an as an Amazon rating system. The difference is that there's, there's invested reasons that someone would give it a positive or negative score. Um, as far as a community collection of, of reports, potentially in this case, right? I, I, there, there's certainly value in, in the community consensus, and that is certainly considered in the evaluation from this perspective of like, if the community brings to light that there's been, I don't say nefarious activity or some sort of like accusation of like false claims, it's kind of assessment, of how, well, how is the project responding? If they're, if they're kind of like, you know, if they're addressing the challenges or if they're ignoring them, there's kind of community consensus already built in by, you know, people posting things socially. So that is a consideration in this score, but it doesn't reflect in a, a wild swing of numbers and rating systems in this case, right? So the, the, the value here is even if there's a particular um, disagreement with how the approach is taken in any, any metric, at least it's consistent across the board. And I think there's value in that. Uh, to be reliable and, mm -hmm. and consistent. So hopefully that explains enough for now. <laughs> yeah, looks great. A lot of useful metrics and falling in love with this one. I have some questions for you, RJM. The first one sure. is, how often do you update this? Like I was just about to ask you about Muesli Swap because now they're being really legitimate, but they have a low score. So how often do you update this score? Well, that that that's a great question, Dumpling. It's as as much time as I have. <laughs> so there's there's absolutely a backlog. There's projects that are certainly like well known in the community that 
aren't on the list at this moment. They're they're down. Here, I'll open this up. Like there's down down the line. Let me get rid of that. Like there's there's a lot of projects that haven't been scored, and and part of the challenge that 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 this project uh, particularly offers is it's it's a slow slog to go through each and every white paper and and all the metrics, you know, one by one specifically mm -hmm. to go to get one score. And then we're in a landscape where things are changing by the week, right? So th this this is the challenge of this particular approach is, uh, you know, definitely could use more resources to to push forward the effort. This is all hand curated content. This was not web scrape. This is like went mm -hmm. to every single website, gathered every single content. And again, there's certain websites have been updated since. <laughs> so it's, it's a moving target. Yeah. Uh, but again, it's a, it's a launch pad to start investigation. And yeah, so there, there's a lot of work to get to go through here for sure. My follow up question is, you're wor working on this alone, right? Do you have you thought about recruiting somebody to onboard to teach them and then you guys are aligned can work together on this? Absolutely. I mean, I'm open to like this, this, again, the, the start of this was a personal project to understand the scope of DeFi on, on Cardano. Um, by this effort, this is this is what I've been able to produce on my own, and and it and it's absolutely open to having other people join, and and find a way to help build this out. So it's a tool that's useful for as many people as possible. It should be useful for everybody as long as it's understood that it's context specific. Like I was getting at early, this is a subjective opinion, but as long as it's understood what that is, and how that's arrived, again by those metrics, use it as a tool. And again, there's going to be disagreements and, and, and new information come along and projects are going to update and change. It's also a beacon for our DeFi platforms. Like, you know, we're kind of low. It's how, how do we get higher? And then I can share by example of what that means uh, from a consumer point of view. Because the best part about this particular approach is I'm a, I'm a representative of the average investor. Let's say, stay for instance, I'm not going to the the depth and the, and the degree that um, a scat down might be doing is like maybe evaluating the the math and the and the and the smart contract components of a, of a platform. I don't have that particular uh, vantage point. I'm an average consumer. Mm -hmm. So in their white paper, are they able to clearly describe the problems that they're trying to solve and clearly just describe the solutions? That to me instills confidence, or maybe doesn't, depending on what the content is. And if they can't reach the average consumer, then that's, is that me or is that, is that you? It's kind of, kind, of the, kind of the point of view there, right? So again, it's, it, this is more of a scope, try and capture things that may be lost in the weeds. And it's, and it's no insult to a project that maybe doesn't have those abilities, but that's their, on their onus to reach the consumer then just as much as it is to elevate myself to understand what they're doing, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of a meet in the middle concept of like, look, you got a low number because again, maybe I didn't understand. And it could be very well that I need to elevate myself to understand more about this, this, this ecosystem. But at the same time, maybe you can come down to us and give us a better scope of what you're trying to achieve here. And that's yeah. how we come to an agreement. Yes, you're, you're a legitimate, legitimate project that I can feel confident in investing in, or even just talking about forget investing this like you're proud to be in this platform this ecosystem that has these projects that are are building things for the future and again this is the context thank you my final question before we move on to the group discussion is i'm very curious about do you put numbers uh, to certain criteria you listed here like jurisdiction in which country who is the project lead does it matter uh, like do you give more points if they're from switzerland as opposed to from lithuania Right. So that's a very great question, uh, Dumpling. So this, there's two, there's two sides to this. There's another spreadsheet that I use that helps break down information, much similar to like the tool that um, that uh, Eric was sharing with the uh, ScatDAO DYOR tool. Um, so it's 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 a it's a very specific uh, process, but it doesn't consider jurisdiction. That's just more informational. Uh, I've been asked many times, like, wouldn't it be great to see what projects are available to be accessed by uh, participants in the United States? Yeah. So absolutely. That'd be, that'd be incredibly useful for people in the United States. But then can somebody do it for Australia and Canada and, yeah. and you know, like all these other countries? 
like that that's just a a a launch like you'll have to do that for yourself i mean there's there's only so much i can hand feed someone's effort to research yeah. into DeFi. so getting most of the way there um the fact that the the project lead is public i mean that's that's weighed very highly in this case an anonymous project is is scored with with a certain level of penalty as a, in in respect to the score uh it's not to say that that anonymous project can't um produce good value and to the ecosystem but it's just going to reflect in the score it's like they're much more likely that they're able to easily walk away with tokens than you know people that are in the public and, and want to actually show their face and and be in front of their project and and represent it so like this the, the metrics on this spreadsheet as a as an example are certainly considered but the how they're scored a lot of these metrics aren't specifically scored like line by line and, and item by item, certainly by category, as I was alluding to earlier, between social engagement, which is the links to their social uh, uh, platforms. I mean, going through the white paper, going through the tokenomic model and et cetera, et cetera. So they're used, but again, not every single line item here is particularly part of the score in this case. Thank you both for the presentations. I'm excited for us to have a group discussion. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Whatever you got. Okay, uh, RGM, could you please exit the share screen and oh. we go back to the discussion? You bet. Thank you. Eric, what do you think of the tool? I thought it was super cool, the CRCI tool. Yeah, awesome. Uh, excited to see it uh, more. I, I've kind of played with it a bit uh, the first time I saw it and it's, uh, it's excellent, man. Uh, curious, the, the highest score on there was 63, right? Yes, so far. So, so it, is there a reason that like most of these DeFi projects are getting kind of low scores or like, uh, is there like a common denominator that's holding them back or what, what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So, I mean, part of this is there's projects that, that they don't, they don't have a, a, a solution released yet, right? So there's there's not there's a lot a lot to to go through. Uh, the there's not a lot of audit reports that have been released for most of the projects either, and th that weighs highly in this case as well. So for instance, if the ScatDAO uh, audits a project, I mean that would be a consideration when 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 I look through the audit from ScatDAO goes toward a project, and there's a lot of points you know allotted toward that um, component of the score. So with the fact that there's a there's not a lot of audits available like the ceiling of the, the the highest score is only so high as as more audits going to come through that's certainly going to you know move the needle in this case so there's, there's room to grow there's room for all these projects to fill in the blanks but it's just the fact that we're in the state of building and there's not a lot of uh, content to to judge so they get zero scores in this case so that's that's why like it might seem that they're low but it's again it's still relative it's still a relative scale uh, but that's still and that's where the there's still value there as soon and and i still have to go through sunday because again the first the first um um score there was before they launched their their platform but here's the catch is they're still calling it mainnet beta which makes no sense to me they're dealing with real money it's not a beta it's like this is <laughs> actual mainnet so there's terminology that i'm going to call people out on but and then again this is subjective opinion I'm not here to fight, start a fight with Sunday. It's just the point is that there's there's context with all this 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 framing, and there's timing. Like I just I, I tried to get in front of it. That there's lag here because again I've scored some things at the beginning of the year. Within six weeks, things have changed completely for some projects, right? Um, so it's just a matter of getting back to it. But again, on that note, happily to have more people involved if, if you're willing to reach out. So that's a that's a, a kind of a comment there. Did I answer your question? Is that okay? Thoroughly. Good. Eric, I have a question just regarding the scoring. Like I was also wondering why the scores are so low for CRCI, but it looks like for the DYOR tool, the scores are pretty high. So those scores that you saw in there were just made up numbers. Like I was going through and clicking them. So uh, that shouldn't like be used to evaluate, but yeah, they, they are a bit higher. Like I actually did one for Sunday swap and I'll share the report I don't know, within the next day or two, just to kind of give a demonstration of what they look like. Uh, but yeah, our, ours would be a bit higher, I think on average, um, you know, when looking through it for Sunday swap at the, uh, off the top of my head, 
the community had like a eight and a half, maybe out of 10. The tokenomics were quite low. They were like four and a half out of 10, something like that. Um, uh, the dev team was also fairly high. It was like eight, eight or nine out of 10. And uh, the trading metrics weren't available at the time because the token wasn't actually trading yet, but uh, still, still pretty good. So like looking at the dev team, not too many red flags. They were all well known. They have a lot of, you know, some of them not not the best, but some of them, you know, quite quite good on there. They have some good advisors, you know, DCs uh, advising that team. They had M Labs that were, you know, doing a lot of the the uh, writing of the smart contracts. So like, the dev team was pretty solid. Not too many uh, the the metrics that we had on there were uh, red flags. The audit was completed. And so looking through them, the tokenomics, I think, uh, you know, maybe people have different opinions, but based on the metrics that we have, the to tokenomics are pretty, pretty bad, you know, compared to others. Uh, but overall, the score would have been probably like 70s, you know, uh, mid 70s or so, just because the tokenomics were holding it back. So on average, I would say that they're uh, a, a bit higher than what we were seeing on that report. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So what do you what do you guys see where the synergy is? Looks like you have quite different use cases, right? Like for Eric's tool, people need to do that themselves. But for RJM's CRCI tool, it looks like you are generating the report and people could readily use it. Yeah, so we spoke about this a bit uh, last time when we talked and it's kind of cool having both options, you know? So like for one, it's kind of training people how to do research, get a better understanding of it. And on the other hand, you have somebody that is experienced that it's kind of the expert opinion on it, you know? And so ideally when people are going through and uh, doing research more and more, ideally they're becoming experts, but you know, at first, not, not as much. So having a place that you can look to and say, hey, this is someone that's done it a lot and their opinion holds a lot of weight, that's always gonna be a great thing to be able to look at and get some information from. And then having the thing where people can become experts or learn how to do it, it's nice. So it's kind of a, a, the best of both worlds. So in your tool, Eric, you're not judging anything. It's the user who's filling in the blanks and then they are getting a generated report. Yeah, so each user, like the, at a high level, the hope is that it's for people that are new to Cardano or new to blockchain in general. Maybe they haven't invested in stocks. Maybe they're new to investing altogether. So it's kind of saying, hey, here's what I would look at or what you should be looking at when you want to research something. And here's how you would go about the steps of actually doing that research. So, you know, it's it's educational as much as mm -hmm. anything else, right? And then if you're not brand new to Cardano and you actually do do research on your own, it's still nice to have the template where it's a methodical way to go through and document something so that you could share that information with others. And, you know, it's, uh, it, it's designed so that brand new people can use it, but I'm also planning on doing probably one a week where I would go through and say, what's a project that we want to look at or people care about? Let me do one for Sunday Swap or Genius Yield or Liquid or, you know, whatever project are out there and so you can have an expert you know uh someone that's more skilled at it go through and do that and share those reports and perhaps those will be uh, more popular but it's also for for anybody and then uh long term or not long term in the near future we want to have on the website where people can go and post their uh reports and there'd be kind of a ranking system where people can go and look at them and say these, these ones are great, maybe these ones not so much, but everyone can kind of upvote the ones that they like so that you're able to go on and say, okay, the ones at the top, these are really high quality. The person that's doing them does high quality work often. And it's kind of a resource for consistently good research reports where you can go on and learn about these different projects. So it's a rating for the ratings. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, rateception. <laughs> right, sounds great. RJM, who do you think uh, are your target audience for this CRCI tool? Well, that's that's a great question, Dumpling. I think I think uh, anybody interested in DeFi and Card um, Cardano is can use this tool and it, it, use it however you want. Again, that you, you can put as much trust and weight on it as you prefer. But again, under the understanding that there is no, you know, uh, investment advice implied. This is simply a, a subjective opinion from one vantage point. Now, it is a very consistent vantage point. That said, it's, I'm willing to adjust it and mold it to, to new information and to the ways that, you know, people give feedback. Like, I don't understand this or this should maybe be considered when I don't think it is at this point and things like that. Um, 
would I be able to show show my screen one more time? I just have one more other, uh, comment as far as report goes, if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, so I don't have as as a elaborate of a, a report as the stat dial, for instance, but I do have scorecards that are, I post on on Twitter, on the CRC uh, CRC index uh, at, uh, at Twitter. And these are a simple summary of such reports and, and the weightings of the, of the ranking system. So for instance, we have, we have mailed in front of us and it gives us a bit of a short version of, of uh, like their website, their official Twitter, you know, who the project lead is. And then here's a perfect example, like why the scores are so low, like the percent of solutions active, well, they don't have any <laughs> solutions active at this moment. So 47 is in context of like, okay, there's Nothing's been launched, but this is the metrics that we are scoring, for instance. So social engagement, we're going to give them uh, 100% on that. White paper, it's well, it's well uh, you know, explained it, it's, and instills a lot of confidence. And that's the framing of this whole uh, evaluation, the confidence, not a review. It's not a performance metric. It's, it's the confidence index, right? Tokenomics is, is a bit of, a, of an asterisk on that, one, I'm going to say. Uh, it scores a little bit lower, for instance. The visibility and the developers, I mean, the teams, you know, been very vocal. They have, they hold spaces for other projects. A lot of the times, even um, they're very in front of the, the public, uh, you know, they score very well there. Again, without having a project launched, there's not a lot to audit and, or track record to, to look at. Uh, very less, and user protections, again, the, the, the product isn't launched. So there's not much to score there. Uh, industry accolades actually tries to account for uh, recognition. Yeah, in this case, I have to go through my report review again, but I think this was there were some points awarded to, for, for the fact that their ISPO, uh, they claim to have onboarded 40% new wallets to the Cardano ecosystem that would have come from exchanges. So that's an ecosystem positive component, right? There, there's a lot of subjective opinions about the impact of the ISPO model. But again, this is a this is a component that that from an opinion point of view, uh, boosted the Cardano ecosystem in its objectives for decentralization and, you know, getting participants to participate off exchanges, as an example. Um, and then right at this point, they don't have any any demerit. So this is a, a, a summary card of MELD. And then in the same way, you know, go through Empower uh, in the exact same process and, and, and same criteria, go through Indigo Protocol, exact same process, same criteria. Uh, and I, I try to post like the positive is part of the, the comment, try to find a highlight and, and we can all find the concerns, but just want to find something positive about each project is as much as realistic. And, uh, you know, each project is scored, you know, by finance is up there, uh, what they offer, what they bring to the table. So again, there, there's kind of a scorecard that people can look at as a quick reference point to, you know, just kind of see where things land uh, amongst each other. So, so why do you rate Vi Finance social engagement as 40% uh, in contrast to some others as 100%? What kind of measurements are you using to determine this? Right, well, that's a great question. So in, in this particular frame, uh, social engagement looks at uh, the project's websites, um, like all their, like their interface, uh, their, their, their social communities, the Twitter profiles, things like that to try to get a sense of the caliber of the project uh, it's, it's looking at. Uh, in this case, I actually specifically uh, state in the concerns in this case that the website um, documentation and the UX UI clarity is, is lacking uh, from, again, a subjective opinion, um, as, and especially in compared to other projects in our ecosystem. Social engagement doesn't actually impact the total score as much as, as, as the percentage number would, would, would assume because Every single scam that exists has an incredible website and incredibly pretty presentation, right? So, but this is a kind of a sign of like, you know, we, we, we assume you guys are great at the, you know, uh, smart contracts, but can you, can you, again, from an opinion, like the website and the documentation portal is a little, you know, thin on, on instilling confidence in this particular concept. So hopefully that answers your question, but it tries to capture what is that, and and even going through the Twitter, what's the, what's the quality of the content? Are you just retweeting like Charles every day, or are you actually sharing with the community? Are you engaging? Are you, you know, sending updates? Are you, is there some back and forth, right? So again, it's trying to somewhat assess. Again, is your Twitter was your Twitter profile 
you know, made in February 2022 and have 50,000 followers. I mean, it's it's not a sign of confidence in that sense. But if it started a year and a half ago and it's got, you know, 9,000 people, maybe there's also another sign that, like, why so low? And maybe that's just a testimony and maybe a mirror on the project. Say, wh why is our number so low? Well, maybe, I mean, you tell me, but this is what I'm seeing, right? So that's kind of the framing of a lot of these numbers. It's trying to get a gauge, but it's consistently measured, at least, between the projects. So a lot of them have 100 and 100 because, you know, they just have a good presentation and, and that's easy to achieve. And, and one subjective opinion by finance have maybe has some room to grow is, is, is all I'm saying. <clears throat> right. So my question is, we are heavily relying upon, for now, one person's judgment uh, on many of the metrics. I think many people would wonder, what are your expertise and skills in order to judge on so many different metrics? Like, okay, I trust that you can judge on social engagement and tokenomics because they can be straightforward. But what about industry accolades? Like, who are you to tell us you think this, these guys have very good industry merits? Well, that is a great question. I'm, I'm actually very glad you asked that. Um, what's that? Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. This is spicy. It's good. Uh, no, this is exactly the perfect question to ask because like what gives me the right to, to judge a project or assess a project on any of these criteria? Um, and I was alluding to earlier, I am the ideal demographic that is the most well-equipped to probably their target market. I am, I am their target market to achieve, um, you know, that they want to, to see adopt their platform. Um, so if they struggle to attract my attention in, in these metrics, I mean, is it me or is it them is part of the question, right? So what gives me, again, and I, I'm, I'm fully out in front of the fact that I, I don't have Maladex up here, but I can't dissect the math of a Maladex white paper mm -hmm. specifically, right? But I can somewhat discern, at least with my capacity, that they're able to describe their, the problems that they're trying to solve and present the solutions. So that could have been copy pasted from something I'd, I've never heard about. That's why there's, I'm not judging the project on one, one metric and one opinion, right? I'm, it's a, across a spectrum of these metrics and it's a weighted opinion. I'm going to weight the white paper higher than their Twitter profile, for instance. But again, it's from a certain perspective. The, what I think the, the specific value of the CRCI is that it's consistent. So it could be mm -hmm. consistently understood that I'm well, not well equipped to, to judge a tokenomic model. Let's just use that as an example, because that is the hardest one, in my opinion. Um, so there could be complete disagreement. But with that framing in mind, you know, Vi Finance gets 100, uh, Indigo gets 72, uh, Empower 56, and Mail 28. So at least on its own scale, if, if there's a disagreement with that from anyone's perspective, as they launch their own research, which is the point, um, that can be taken into context with how these numbers are arrived. So anything that is disagreed, well, at least it's consistent across the board. And that, and then that way it's self-policing for all these numbers. Does that answer your question? I'm beginning to see the value, like you said, is the consistency, right? Because with the yes. same tool, if you give 10 different people, we all get different results, then what's the value and who do we trust? But yeah. my challenge to you, RJM, is I think the same argument could be used for, for example, someone who's just totally clueless and a little bit stupid, and they can be consistent in all the reports because they're horrible at every single report. I'm not saying you are at all, but I think uh, that's one there argument you on. to attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you caught me. Yeah, I but caught you. You, you get what I mean, right? I, no, I, I completely understand that. And that's where, again, it will be by social consensus then the value of the tool. So if there's a general uh, consensus, like, you know, the CRCI is, is kind of, th there's no way that uh, Muesli should be at 19 and Indigo should be at 63, example. And again, but that's maybe their, their understanding or misunderstanding of the tool. You're, you're, in my opinion, they maybe shouldn't be the same spread because of the date. Look at the date of the, of the report. It's just, it's just like any report. It's, like, it's an old report. There needs to be an update there. So again, as long as context, context aware, that's where the date is on every single report. Okay, I know for sure that you know 
Amusely has updated their website, their platform, they got history, I've been using it forever. Okay, now I understand where this is in, in context. And it's going to be by social consensus that the value is in the project. It, and it, and it's, it's self-policing. There's also something you didn't bring up, and I'm, I'm a little disappointed, maybe that's coming, but what's, the, what's to say that there's any compromise? Like I was alluding to like the public uh, scoring tools uh, when they have a bag of project X and it's like, everything's a 10 out of 10. There's mm -hmm. no evaluation. It's just, I want to see it pumped. I want to see a high number. So what's to say that the CI can't be compromised and get tokens under the table and, oh, you know, Indigo gave them a bunch of tokens that, you know, and that's why they have a high score. And again, I'm getting in front of that because that's when there's a rating system anywhere, you always kind of wonder how did they achieve that when it doesn't seem to resonate with my opinions. And that's where, again, it hopefully is self-policing. If there's a signal or a sign that one of these or a couple of these projects stick out when when the evaluation process is somewhat understood, then there, there's going to be a sign like maybe there needs to be an adjustment. And if no adjustments made, well, then I can, then the value of the CRCI is on its own. It's only a five out of 10 for talking about rating on rating. I only use it as a kind of an idea, but I'm not going to trust it completely. But from, from my point of view, that's the point. This is just a starting point. I would mm -hmm. rather see you use this as a, as a, place to launch your own research, apply it towards the Scott Dow uh, tool, and then see how you come up with it. I'm happy. I'm, that, that's perfect. This is, a, this is just, again, a very specific uh, and intentional approach to evaluating a project. And, and the, again, the consistency is where the value is in this case. Thank you. Eric, yeah. what do you think? I like it a lot. Uh, I'm interested to see how, uh, you know, all these different projects get scored. Uh, I, I think it's a really cool tool. I, I think you did a great job with it, man. Well, I appreciate it. Um, and again, thank you so much for having me on here to kind of share it and explain it to the world. So it's, it, it's just growing as it, as it goes and as time and energy allows, and I'm not going to burn out about it. It's going to be a project of passion at this point, uh, but absolutely willing to, to grow and expand as, you know, more people get interested and want to contribute and, and maybe can have inject ways to make it better. Because again, for all the weaknesses that it might have, absolutely willing to explore how to make it better. Thank you. I, I actually had a question or a thought on it. So ha have you considered for the things that aren't applicable? So like if they haven't been audited or, you know, certain things haven't gone through, what about taking it out of the score? So it's not necessarily hurting them, you know, and lowering it. So like mm -hmm. the things that aren't applicable or haven't occurred yet, it's just not factored in and it doesn't go into the weighting. Um, that's, that's a great question. I, and I think um, I want it there to, because again, it's still consistent. There's nothing that's got a hundred out of a hundred to overweight like the rest of the scores. None of them are, are over 63 at this point. So again, it's still, it's, it's a kind of a sliding scale in that respect because there's no products launched with the exception of Muesli and uh, Sunday at the, at the moment, right? Uh, things are going to be turning on very quickly, though. In the next couple of months, we're, we're probably going to see a lot of projects launch at the same time. So if it wasn't busy now, <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see something uh, sparks flying. So again, this, this is part of the context. Like, Would you rather see something 83 out of 100, just as an example, that doesn't have a launch project, or would you rather see a 47 out of 100 uh, in context that, okay, that this is from what able to be judged, this is where it lands in the spectrum of DeFi and Cardano. And, I, and I've opted for the, the, the latter just because, again, this is this, there's room to grow because 83 can be an 83 and 83 all the time, but the numbers are all underneath it are all changing. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't get it, right? The, like what is being judged and it happened to fill the, fill the number. No, I just, I left the number open to grow into for every project. And it's going to be very difficult to achieve 100 out of 100 based on, I'm, I'm a little ruthless on some of the on some of the process. And again, this this is the learning process. What you what everyone's seeing right now is probably version like 23 or 24 of this whole example. Like this has been dwelled over and redone and redone so many times. As again, it's a, a self reflection of like, okay, does this seem to resonate with the data and how it should be measured? And it's just been reworked and reworked and no doubt be reworked again. As, as new information and more people want to get involved with, you know, help, helping fine tune this to make it more useful. 
And again, it's context specific. So that's where, again, the value should, should lie long-term. Yeah, I think the value in the consistency here, because if you have one project that's missing two metrics like audit or white paper, and you have another project mi missing five, I, we don't get a uniform kind of standards. So I think it's just right. important we have all together. And uh, if you don't have it, you just don't have it and we can fill it in later. That's right. And that's exactly where it's like, their, their score was 47 uh, on date X. Well, since then they've they released a new white paper and they have an audit report. Well, now how does that number, how does that change the number now? Right, so there, now there's a meaningful difference. Like they used to be 47, now they're a 62 or whatever it is, right? And it's like, oh, okay, I can see the progress of, of the projects as they're going. So again, it's still a valuable metric to see the improvement and the launch. In fact, it's probably more important that these metrics are in, available to the public before they launch, because it's kind of an indication, again, of confidence. Like, how can we rely on this when we're, the, the tokenomic models are just being started. There is no project. None of these pro, um, companies have, have projects that we can use. So again, how exposed are we to, to them walking away? And this is kind of actually e exactly the inspiration for the initiative. It's just like, how do we determine this? How do we judge? There's not, none of these have been around for three years that there's history and there's, you know, people have gone through this fire. We're going through it right now. Like, this is why there's nothing like this exists in our, in our ecosystem. That's why I made it. Thank you. I appreciate it. So I have some final questions for both of you. The first one is after both of you presented, where do you think uh, you guys can collaborate or have synergy to benefit, for example, a new person uh, coming to Cardano and wanting to learn about DeFi and RealFi? Um, so yeah, I, I think that going to uh, that index, it's a great starting point to go through and get an idea of, hey, here's some uh, projects that I'm interested in, or, you know, let me go through and see how somebody that's, you know, really experienced rank them. And then, okay, I want to go through and make my own assessment now. How do I go about doing that? Well, then you can go to the DYOR tool and uh, uh, learn how to do your own research points and kind of compare and contrast them. So I think it's really cool to have that as a, a starting point and get some idea of different projects you want to research. And then when you really want to dig into them, then you could use the tool and do uh, your own research yourself. Yeah, I, I would I would echo that exactly. I mean, I mean, this is this. First of all, the, the spreadsheet itself is direct links to the projects, so you don't have to go through and search Twitter and try to find where are the DeFi projects. There's actually a lot of uh, um, ecosystem maps in our, in our, in our community that are, you know, try to list between you know, NFTs and, and, and wallets and all sorts of things. This, this is a very DeFi you know, focused. And, and with a, a hand curated, like you, you saw the spreadsheet, like all the data is there and, and everything's exposed. So when you want to use the DYOR tool, I mean, you're going to have that sheet open and click on all the links and go in and find your information for yourself. Right in front of your face, though, is kind of the score and how it's kind of been assessed. So again, they're very synergistic as far as energy and for, as far as like uh, launching into one's own research into DeFi. And that's kind of the point. This is not to be, again, right? When I started, I said, don't just take the top three and throw your net worth at it. That's not the context. This is just, this is a subjective opinion of where they land as far as confidence. You take what that is from there and do your own research. So again, very synergistic, apply what you want and use Scott Dow tool or any other tool that, that you have, a lot of people have their own process. Well, here, again, here on a silver platter, here's the context, here's all the links, you know, go find them for yourself, so. That, that, that's actually a really good uh, point as well. Um, you know, for our work steps, a lot of it is saying, you kind of have to search around, find the website, find this information, you know? So if he has mm -hmm. that all listed on a spreadsheet already, then I would almost like to include that in the tool and say, start by opening this spreadsheet. It's gonna have all the different links for you and you could find the team information or you could find this and that just by doing that. So that's uh, actually a really cool suggestion. We'll, we'll, we'll look into seeing if we can incorporate that. So there you go, dumpling. Did that answer your question? <laughs> yes, I'm seeing chemistry and sparks here. So thanks, guys. <laughs> so if I want to check out both of the tools, are they already live? Can I already go to a website and start using them? Uh, for ours, technically, yeah. You can go to dyortool.io and it's technically up, but we're still doing some last minute tweaks to it and making sure that the formatting works. Like 
Ideally, it's meant for a computer. Uh, you know, everybody prefers their phones to do pretty much everything in uh, you know this day and age. But it's really better when you're going through this information and documenting. Uh, it's kind of made for a computer. So right now, that's uh, if you were to open up on your phone, the, a lot of the functionality wouldn't be working properly or it wouldn't be looking too good. And so, still trying to go through and make some tweaks. I haven't really been advertising that it's open and you know ready ready for use. But technically, the website's available if you want to go check it out. I mean, if somebody checks it out, and since you're still building, it's good that people are checking it out and giving you feedback. And if they want to, how can they reach you? Yeah, so there's going to be a, a button there because, like we said, a big part of it is not just like bug reports. Um, you know, it's kind of going to be a, a eternal beta where you know it, it's always in the process of being fixed or being updated. So, like, if people have comments on you know this isn't working well or you know this button didn't uh, it, it didn't go where it's supposed to, we want that kind of feedback. Hopefully, it's going to be finished before we're really advertising it and people are using it. Um, but we also really want that feedback of people saying, hey, this is something that I always look at when I research. You didn't include it. You know, let, let's talk about that. Here's the work steps that I go through to do it. We're going to include that kind of stuff. Or, you know, hey, I saw you gave four points for if the team is anonymous or that. This is crypto. Why can't you be, uh, you know, anonymous? That should be totally fine. Let, let's have that discussion. And whatever the community is really thinking is OK. Those are the kind of things that we want to be reflected. So, um, so yeah, absolutely. You know, people, if they're going through and using it, we want to hear feedback. If they're finding bugs or problems with it, we want to hear that. But more importantly, we want to hear your thoughts and suggestions on uh, the actual content. Sounds great. RJM, can we already go to the CRCI.review uh, website and start using that or checking that? Yeah, so the CRCI review is a direct link to the Google spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet is the website in this case. <laughs> and it's, and it's, a, it's a living document. It's active. You might see me poking around as we go. Uh, things updated. Um, and then the CRCI, uh, CRC index at, on Twitter is the Twitter account where you know the the, the cards are going to be out and they, maybe some discussion and some like I, I'd like to see like you know the arguments like I don't agree with this and I I actually think this is a great project I want to see that kind of discussion fostered from this this investigation and and encourage other people to like well I disagree I want to investigate and then once you investigate then you care and then once you care well isn't that the point I mean you want I want people to to look for themselves and and to find out and make, again just use this as a launch a launching tool and and as from, from and again the context is it's from a good actor in their ecosystem we want to find we want to measure our DeFi landscape we want to keep them accountable we want to protect the users and give them get every, everybody tools to to uh you know be able to, to participate and actually a very strong tool uh for our DeFi platforms to like how do we improve? Like, where are we, where are we missing some things? Where are we, why is our score from one subjective opinion kind of uh, in, in a certain, certain metric? And again, when you brought this up earlier, what gives, what gives me the right to, to assess any of these projects and, and the expertise per se, say, well, then you tell me, like, why did, why did this particular uh, initiative come to this conclusion? Is there a way to, to put a mirror on ourselves and say, you know what, maybe we could do better in, in, in area X, Y, Z, or he's completely out of line. Maybe he needs to get up to date and there could be both, both could be very well, could be true. <laughs> so it, again, this is usable, tweet it, retweet it, mm -hmm. save the cards, put it later, compare and contrast between different dates to see how the projects have been, improved. But the, the spreadsheet is a living document. And again, looking for more people, if, if they have similar energy, yeah, by all means, let's, let's come on board and and see how we can make this good for everybody, as many people as possible. Sounds great. Thank you both. Uh, it's dumpling space. I don't allow any shells, so I'm going to do the shelling for you guys. <laughs> everybody watching this video, please go to the links below. I'm going to link both of the tools. Please go try them out. I know I'm very excited to check them out myself. And if you have some great feedback, I will link their Twitter accounts as well, so you can reach both of the projects. And thank you for coming. So great tools, uh, excited to try them. And uh, before we meet again, take care and best of luck to your projects.